So there we go. This is what everybody's talking about in the uh, radio control model world. Little glider. It's uh, seven pound ninety nine. Some people even got them even cheaper. EPP. Um, eighty six centimetre wingspan and sixty eight centimetres long. Comes with a three year warranty. <laughs> So let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. We've got a nice EPP fuselage, tailplane with some significant notches on there, which we'll talk about. And ooh, nice set of wings, EPP. A little bit of um, dihedral at the tips, and we're going to sort that out for my project. And what else have we got in here? Right, instructions, stickers, doubt it, cardboard box, doubt it. So, first thing, um, we want to store the gear in the uh, nose. Um, some people have just literally got a um, hot air gun, slowly, on a gentle heat, or a hair dryer, and work those off. I have already just taken this off and um, it wasn't easy. I've got a shed load of glue on mine uh, but I slowly pro managed to prise mine off. went round with a knife. Uh, it's come off but I think this must have been the Friday glider because there was a shed load of um, hot glue in there. I've managed to get it off but what I also did was there's two little lugs which um, help to keep it in place. I managed to save those so I'm going to keep those because they might be useful for um, popping the canopy back on. So I'm just going to put that and that to one side. So what we're going to start off with first is I'm going to work on the wings for my project. So my first step is um, I'd like to make this a fully aerobatic glider with um, I think I've come up with a unique idea for the elevator and tailplane to be high movement. But I want to take this dihedral out. So there's a number of couple of ways we can do this. And I'm just, because I'm virtually doing this live, I'm just going to experiment with a slightly different variation than what everybody else. Some people have literally taped it straight. Some people have put a cut in the back and then hot glued it great idea, all works good. I'm just going to try a um, slightly different idea using an iron and steam. I mean some people hold it over a kettle and then just straighten it. I'm just going to try a slight variation on that. I'm going to give it a go first. Okay, so that seems to work okay. How, how I take the um, dihedral out of this is I've got some wet paper towel and I'm going to start underneath first and put it across where the uh, dihedral bend is. An iron, the model covering iron, I've got it whacked to full heat and then I'm literally just going to hold that down like so. You get lots of steam. I'm going to bend it up just slightly. cool off just a little bit and then I'm going to go over the other side and then one last little bit of the process and I'm just going to hold that over the bench just going to leave that and take a bit of steamy rag off I'm going to leave that just allow that to cool there you go boom so I have taken that out of there I might just do it just a little bit more but 
that so I've managed to straighten my wings. A bit of, now one little tip there, um, I noticed in my excitement to get the tail plane out, I've got a tiny little groove and dent there. And in fact actually it's worth remembering with any of your foam planes, that if I just put that bit of steam over there, and just put that on there, there you go, dent's come out. Okay, rings are nice and flat. I want to put some huge ailerons on here. So I have decided if you measure in from where that little notch is, from where the goes inside the wing, I've measured out there two centimetres. So that's the where the aileron's going to start. I'm coming up 55 there. And then the other one is going to go right out to the tip. So at the tip, I'm going to go just just a snit or 25. Make that 25. There. That's 25. That's 55. So I'm going to end up with an aileron that looks like that across there. Um, I've undecided whether I'm going to top cut these or bottom cut these, but I'm going to try and make a live hinge. So, I've cut one aileron with a live hinge. So, uh, I've come 20 in, this is 55, this one's 25, and what I've done is marked it on the uh, undersurface. What I'm going to do now is I cut all the way through the trailing edge there and then with a steel rule where I've marked I'm now going to run the sharp knife but not all the way through. I'm going to go about two thirds of the way through and then I'm going to slowly peel the aileron back and then just gently run along with the knife till I get through about 90% of it and then slowly cut it back. And then once I cut it back, and then I'm going to cut some big V's, so I want to get shed loads of movement. I might even do that a bit more, but that's uh, quite good at the moment. But I want to do so. That's what I'm going to do next. So I've cut the slots for the aerons for the live hinges. There's no need for any tape. I might do if it gets damaged after a while, but at the moment that's nice and neat. Um, so what I've done is I put the, the fuselage back on. And I'm just going to drop two servos in here, like so. And then just remembering that uh, where I'm going to run the wire back through the fuse large. Now, a couple of ways you can do this to cut the hole for the servo. Um, you can cut round with a sharp knife, pick it out. It's a fairly long process. Um, you can use a soldering iron. I wouldn't because breathing this shit in is quite dangerous. Um, well, it's not much better than the technique I'm going to use. What I'm actually going to do is, I've got a Dremel, I've got a little milling burr here, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to mill it down to the depth that I need. A little tip, just try and make it a slightly tight fit. So that's all I'm going to do, is I'm just going to drill these, uh, mill these into here, like so, and then just mill this hole where I've marked the servo. And I'm also just going to run a cut wire through there. For, going to run a cut wire through there for the uh, cables to run through. I've actually positioned them just about over the CG, and I've also made sure that I've actually, by the time I've got them in, I've got plenty of wire that still runs into the cockpit. So I've finished the aerons. Um, <laughs> something to think about. Obviously, I want to slide that back on at some place. So I've left the horn off. I've left the servo unglued one side and I've left the horn unglued one side. So I'm going to slide that all back in and then I'll reassemble it. So that's all ready to go. Uh, quite pleased with that. I'm going to make the push rods up after I've in everything's just all ready to go. That's the wings with the live hinges. So there's no tape. Works beauty. Um, so that's done. And now, next project, all moving tailplane. Uh, I've done a little bit of pre-work on already, 
So what I would suggest is, but the one tip also is, as it says in the instructions, when you're flying this, you want the, there's a little square indentation, you want that facing up. If you have the circle facing, then the glider just loops. It changes the uh, angle of the tailplane. So uh, what I've done is, I've sorted out a carbon tube and roughly jigged up about where I'm going to cut it. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm going to cut that in there like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these and then insert this. And then the next thing is to figure out how to come up with some sort of hinge system so I get that sort of movement. So, as I said, I'm making this up as I go along. I'll make this up as I go along. Right, so what I've done is I cut a channel for the tube in roughly about the middle of the tail plane uh, and then I've cut the other side out. So the tube fits in there like so. I'm going to lash out. I'm not going to use hot glue. I'm going to lash out and epoxy it out in place. I've cut these two so that um, I'm then going to insert a dowel through into those and then that is then going to fit Oof. look at that that's going to fit on there like so I'm going to do all of this so it gets a nicer support and then we'll put the dowel wing dowels in and then we'll have the rotating tail plane I think <laughs> so um, uh, that's worked perfectly I've glued the tube in got it all centered beautifully drilled um, one hole in there went in there lovely for an all moving tailplane copped it up there my mistake wasn't paying attention but anyway that fits in there like so that's going to get the control horns on so that's my all moving elevator and then the next thing I've just done is cut the rudder off and what I've done is I've milled a hole out and that is going to drop in there like so and then I've cut a slot in there and then I'm going to glue that servo into there like that and then that's going to be an all moving rudder so uh, I've just got some gluing and sticking to do and some connections to make but it's coming on very nicely so there you go <coughs> she's all finished all moving elevator all moving rudder and ailerons and the battery installation, the gear installation is in here I'm using a Eneloop 800 milliamp hour uh, AAA battery pack and then a small receiver there uh, I've not even had to hollow that out, just trimmed it out a little bit just milled that out, milled the battery out and she's ready for a test flight